Hello and welcome to Honors Function. In this lecture, we're going to see an important application of exponential function. It's a model of growth. We've already looked at a model in the previous lecture of exponential function in a logistic function, a logistic model that describes the increase of a population with a plateau after a certain time. Here is another model of growth very important in finance, it's a financial model, the model for investment. Of course, it would be a little bit simplified, but not too, too far from reality. Let's begin. To describe this model, you will need an initial investment. I will call that P. It's measured in dollars. This is the initial value. It's sometimes called the present value, PV, present value, because you have it now, as opposed to future value you will see and you also need an interest rate now be careful the interest rate is given in decimal form okay so for example if you have an interest rate of 4.5 percent you have to write it in decimal form r would be 0 0.045 the question now is what is your investment worth t years from now okay so the worth the value worth value of your investment, your investment, t years from now, t years from now, okay? You have three different models here. You have the first model where your investment is compounded on a yearly basis, compounded annually, okay? Annually, on a yearly basis, once a year. You can compound your investment compounded several times a year. So let's say n times a year, n times a year. Or you can compound your investment continuously, continuously compounded. So we will see what uh, those different models mean. Let's start right now with compounded annually. Let's see what model describe this annual compounding. To understand where the model of annual compounding comes from, I will start by drawing a timeline. This is something that you commonly do in finance. You will draw a timeline. So this is zero, zero means now, okay? Year zero is now. And now what do you have? You do have your investment. This is P in dollars, and this is what uh, we sometimes call the present value. It's what I have right now, okay? Then we're gonna see what you have a year from now, T equals one, then two years from now, three years from now, and then finally we'll come up with a formula, T years from now. Now this is in year, in year, but this is just a compounding period basically, okay? compounding period period it's just here i will compound every year we will see why i'm using the word compounding period okay so one two three t these are just compounding period in the first model it's going to be here so let's understand what's going on to your investment i'm going to call this p sub one p sub two p sub three and then p sub t and my question is, what are all of these equal to, right? Okay, so what do you have now? At t equals zero, you have p. This is the initial value. p zero is p, okay? Then what's going on at t equals one? What do you have? Well, what is happening? Then p of one is what? It's the initial investment plus the added interest. How do you compute an added interest? You have R percent. How do you compute R percent? You take R times P, right? That's R percent of P, and you add it to P. Let's factor P. It's P times 1 plus R, right? Okay. And that's what you have at the end of the first year. What's going on at the end of the second year? What's going on at P2? Well, you will take the value of your investment at the end of the first year and you will add interest on the value of your investment at the end of the first year. It's compounded, right? So it's P1 plus R times P1. The interest is computed on P1, right? So what is that? Factor P1 and you have P1 times 
1 plus r. But what was p1? p1 is p times 1 plus r. So if you substitute that in there, you will have p times 1 plus r times 1 plus r. So what is it? It's p times 1 plus r squared. All right. I'm going to do it one more year and then I will derive the general formula. What's going on at the end of the third year? What happens to your investment at the end of the third year? Well, at the end of the third year, you will take the value of your investment at the end of the second year and you will add the interest on that value right here. Okay? You factor P2 and you have P2 times 1 plus R and then you substitute P2 from uh, the previous expression and that will give you P times 1 plus R to the power of 3. Okay, so you can see that in general, the formula will be PT equals P times 1 plus R to the power of T. Okay, here T is your, but basically T is also, you can look at it as the number of compounding, compounding periods. Okay, and here one period, in this case, one period equals one year but it doesn't have to be this way we'll see that in the second model okay one period equals one year okay so t here is measured in year here's a formula so what happened on your timeline i started with a timeline and then i i, I went away from it what happened in your timeline right here so you see at t equals zero you have p and then at t equals one you have p times one plus r at t equals two you have p times 1 plus r squared, on and on and on, and at t equals t, you have p times 1 plus r to the power of t. This is called the present value. This would be the future value, okay? So instead of p of t, sometimes I will write the future value and here, if we need a subscript, at time t, uh, but we often don't write that. We understand that it's at time t. The future value of your investment is the present value, right? The present value times 1 plus r to the power of t. t is a number of compounding period, okay? So I prefer this formula because this is a model that we often, often use in finance, okay? Future value present value. All right, so let's go over the first example. You will see it's pretty simple to apply this formula. First question, suppose you have a thousand dollar and you invest it in an account paying an interest rate of 5.5% per year. All right, I'll see what that means. I'm not sure what they're going to do with this 5% yet. Per year doesn't mean it's compounded annually. Uh, it has to be specified. You will see later. How much is in the account after eight years? If the interest rate is compounded annually, all right, so now I know it's compounded annually, okay? So I have my formula. What they're asking me, how much is the account after eight, eight years? They're looking for a future value. So this is a future value problem, okay? So I'm looking at the future value of a present value, $1,000, invested at 5.5%, so 1 plus 0 0.5. 0, 0.055, 5, right? To the power of the number of years is 8. The number of compounding period is 8. So basically, it's 1,000 times 1.055 power 8. And if you type that in your calculator, you will find that the future value of your investment is about $1,000, 534 point 68 dollars i never round up this is what a student told me and it sounded pretty logical he told me that a uh, bank would not round up for us so um I, I think it's a pretty good argument it doesn't matter what the next number is right here i will never round up i will just truncate my number okay um so this is the value of the investment the future value eight years from now now let's look at the second model you want to invest money in a cd account in order to provide for a child education. Your goal is to have, so what's given right now, what's given is a future value. How much should you invest now? What you want is a present value, right? The question now is a present value. So check it out on the timeline. T equals zero, I don't have my present value. What I'm given, 
how long down the road? 18 years. What I'm given at t equals 18 is the future value half a million. Here we go. All right, so I have my future value. So I need to invest money in a CD account paying 9% interest compounded annually. So during these 18 years, the amount will stay in an account that will give me a 9% compounded annually. How much do I need to invest now? So it is the same formula, except that this time, you know the future value, right? And you're looking for the present value. So here you have 500,000 equals, well, the present value times one plus, so 9%, right? So zero point, actually, look, I'm gonna write that directly as 1.09. And how many compounding periods? 18, that's it. So the present value is 500,000 divided by 1.09 to the power of 18. And again, if you type that in your calculator, you will find 105,996.88 dollars. Here, I will go to the cent above because I want to make sure I'm reaching 500. If I go to the cents below, I may not reach 500, okay? So I'm not sure what the number is right here. Um, I did it before, but uh, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna, you know, if you write 88 or 87, I'm not sure what it is, okay? Here is, that's a present value. If you invest now $105,000, in 18 years from now, you will have 500,000. That is, if you are guaranteed 9% compounded annually, okay? Let's now look at the second investment model when you will compound several times a year. For that, to describe this model, I will take an example. Okay, let's look a little bit closer at this compounded annually and then compounded several times a year. So suppose you have an initial investment. I'm going to use a box right here to represent it. Okay, this represents a value, P dollars, um, and you are gonna place it, I took 12% because it's a nice number. This is kind of a, a, a pretty decent kind of return on your investment, okay? 12% a year, compounded annually. Don't believe there is a mistake in the statement right here. I'm, I'll show you after, but it's 12% a year that you compound annually. So what happens to your investment? Well, this is the end of the first year right here. So your investment during one year stays in the account, it stays, it stays, it stays, it stays in the account. And then at the end, of the year, what do you have? You have your investment plus 12% of it. So here we go. Here are, suppose this right here represents the 12%, okay? So you're adding 12% on P right here, right? So it's P plus 12% of P. All right, now in the second model, we're gonna take 12% of your compounded semi-annually. So how do you compound semi-annually? Well, semi-annually, you're gonna have to do something at the end of the six months right here. And this is what happened. You take your investment P, and at the end of six months, you're not gonna put 12% on that. That would be crazy. No, what you do is you add 6% at the end of the six months right here on P, right? So this is 6% added on the P that you had. Okay, now, what's going on at the end of another six months, okay? So at the end of another six months, first of all, you will still have that initial investment that didn't go away, and you will still have that value right here, that interest rate that you added six months ago. That doesn't go away either, right? But now what? But now, you're gonna add another 6% on P right here, right? But you're also going to add another 6% on that 6% right here. So it would be a smaller box right there. And that 6% on that 6%, you see what I mean? This is the power of compounding. You compound on the interest that you have added before, okay? You also compound on the interest that you've added before. And therefore, this model is, well, better than this one, right? Because look, here's this like six and 6% 6 which makes 12% of P, but you are left with this one and that's an added one. Do you see what I mean? So now, suppose that you're compounding monthly. What's going on if you compound monthly? So 
compound it monthly means you're gonna compound every month. So this is six months. If I divide by two, that here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Divide by two, add two marks right here. Here we go. It means I'm going to compound every month. But by how much? Not by 12, not by six, but by 1%, right? You take the interest rate and you divide it by 12, and this is what you're gonna add every month. So at the end of the first month, what are you doing? You're gonna add 1% on it. Here we go, 1% of P. And then this amount, that's one month, okay, one month. And then what do you have at the end of the second month? Well, you still have this, okay, that didn't go away. You still have this 1%, that didn't go away either. But now what? Now you add another percent on this and 1% on this right here, right? That's at the end of the second month. You have to add the 1% on the interest that you added at the end of the first month. Let's go one more month, I won't have enough room, right? So what do you have before you compound? What do you have at the end of the uh, third month? Well, you did have that interest, that didn't go away right here. This interest the, the, from the first month didn't go away. This interest from the second month didn't go away, but now what? Now, you still had 1% on the original amount. You have another percent added on this interest right here. You have another percent added on this interest right here, right? And then you have another percent added on this interest right here, okay? So you see, you keep on adding percent on whatever amount you have. So at the end, I'm not gonna draw it at the end of 12 months, but I'm pretty sure it would be a pretty ugly thing to draw right here, right? I mean, there's so many different pieces everywhere right here. You'd be adding interest everywhere. So you would find, you would find all these 12, 1%, every, you would have 12, 1% added, you know, that would be the 12%, but then you would have also all the added interest on the 1% every time, okay? so. What formula describes this kind of investment? It's not too difficult to come up with a formula. Now, check it out. All right, let's see what we have. We have an initial investment of P dollars. We have an interest rate of R a year, so whatever percent a year, and the number of compounding is N times a year. We're gonna compound N times a year. Therefore, that means the interest you're going to add at the end of a compounding period, you have N compounding pairs a year is R divided by N. Okay, remember the 12% semi-annually is 6% at the end of six months and another 6% at the end of another six months. Monthly is 1% every month. They all have to add to 12%. 6% plus 6%, 12%. 1% plus 1% plus 1% plus blah, 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 12%. All right, so you take the interest rate and you divide it by the number of compounding period. So what happened at the end of the first compounding period? Well, we know the formula. We had it before. It is P times one plus, now the interest rate is R over N. R over N to the power of one. What happens at the end of the second compounding period? It is P times one plus R over N to the power of two. And it goes on and on and on. And at the end of the nth compounding period, so this is the first year, right? This is year one. You have P times one plus R over N. How many times did you compound? N times, that's it. All right, then what happens afterwards? Well. <laughs> At the next compounding period, you're entering the second year right here, right? So the next compounding period is n plus one, right? So you're gonna have p to the power of one plus r over n to the power of n plus one. All right, all right, so I'm gonna follow right here. Let me pick it up directly at the end of the second year, year two, year two. How many compounding periods did you have? Well, you have n compounding period in one year, so in two years, you're gonna have two N compounding period, right? Two N, you've, com you've compounded two N times. So here it's gonna be P to the power of one plus R over N to the power of two N, right? And of course, at the end of the T year, year T, how many compounding period you had? Well, let's see, what is the formula for that? So I'm gonna call that the future value, okay? Future value is going to be the present value, which is P, times one plus R over N, how many times you compound? T years, N times a year. That's N times T compounding period. This is 
your investment after t years compounded n times a year okay and if you take n equals one you're going back to the previous formula please complete example three through eight on your own it's a direct application of the formula and i showed you how it works on the first example let me show you the last formula so the last formula is telling you well you know what now with your initial investment t equals zero right here and p instead of compounding at the end of every month instead of compounding at the end of every day you could compound at the end of every day at the end of every second here uh, we are going to compound continuously continuously compounded okay so there's no there's no discrete model here we compound all the time all the time so how do you come up with the formula when you compound continuously what is this well it's very simple okay you take the formula for compounding n times a year so p times 1 plus r over n to the power of n times t okay n times a year for t years and you make n not equal to 12 monthly not equal to 365 daily not equal to i don't know how many million seconds in a year but equal to infinity infinity okay so this is called a limit right you look at the limit of this ratio as n approaches infinity and that will be the formula for you continuous compounding continuous compounding here okay so what is this limit guys you know how to do that you know how to do that that's the technique of uh, the limit that we've seen in a previous video all right so i'm gonna do it one more time for you you substitute you need a new variable here so let me call y i'm gonna call y n over r okay y is n over r so okay this is my new variable i'm gonna rewrite this limit so i'm gonna rewrite this limit right here this limit is going to be equal to and i'm going to use y this time right we, we've done that before so i need three things first of all in the formula you have r over n y is n over r so r over n is going to be one over y got it here n times t so what is n in this formula n is r times y right so n times t so n times t is just r times y times t okay so here's my second piece right there that's going to be my second piece and then finally the third piece as n approach infinity okay if n if n approaches infinity then let me see if n gets large r is a positive quantity right it's an interest rate is positive um and so when you take something that approaches infinity and you divide it by a positive quantity it's still going to approach infinity right y is approaching infinity so what happens to that limit right here that limit become so as n approach infinity so that means y approach infinity of so p times one plus r over n i said is one over y one over y to the power of nt and nt i said was i said was ryt so it's r y t here we go this is the limit i have to study and here what i'm asserting is that we can study this limit this is a limit as y approaches infinity of p times one plus one over y to the power of y to the power of r times t here we go right uh, rule of uh, basic rule of powers right here so there's no y in this p right this is a constant so i can move it outside my limit i mean i know here it's a little bit you don't know why i'm doing that but this is actually pretty rigorous what i'm doing okay so you can take the, 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 this is not a function of y okay it's not going to change so it doesn't matter if i put it inside the limit or outside so it's p times and here there's no y in there so i'm going to do what i did before right i'm going to take my limit inside limit of one plus one over y as y approaches infinity and that to the power of rt so what's going on here this is p you recognize e times e to the power of rt and this is your third formula 
pt equals p times e to the power of rt. Or if you want to talk in terms of present and future value, the future value is the present value times e to the rt. Okay. If you have a future value problem, you directly apply that. You're given the present value and you're looking for the future value. If you have a present value problem, you are given the future value and you're looking for the present value. Okay. That's all. This video is a little bit on the long side, um, but I thought I needed sometimes to introduce the three models. They are very interesting. A lot of very interesting application in finance. Finance is actually just math and it's quite interesting. Thank you for watching.